Hi, my name is Chris. I'm an engineer for Opaque Multimedia, and today I'm going to be showing you Connect for Unreal. We like to work with advanced tech and Opaque, and we've created a bridge between these two technologies, which you can use to create some very interesting gameplay with the Connect for Windows version 2. Um, just to know, this machine we're using, Windows 8, mid-range gaming machine, it's got an i5, GTX 660, 8GB of RAM, and it's running Unreal Engine 4.5. A quick brief note that you'll also need to be using a USB 3 um, with the Kinect, otherwise the sensor does not have enough bandwidth, um, so just make sure you've got that on your machine. Um, roughly speaking, we'll give you a brief overview of the technologies and the capabilities that we've been using here, um, what you can do and how we've done it here in our introduction level. So, before we start, we should also mention that this is just a plugin like any other. Make sure it's connected, uh, make sure it's installed, make sure it's enabled. Might have to restart Unreal to do that, but just uh, good to keep in mind. And also, you'll need to make sure that in your world settings, you're using the Connect Player Controller, or an um, object which inherits from Connect Player Controller, because that's how we access all of the functions, all the variables, everything that has to do with our Connect um, functions. So, uh, Liam will be our demonstrator for today, so he's just going to hop in and uh, jump in, and we can see immediately that in the Unreal world, we can see essentially what the Connect sees in our world. And how do we achieve that? You can see he's got little points marked out here for every different joint. Um, the Connect actually offers a lot more. Um, for example, we can get the clavicle and the you know middle of the spine, but this is just a basic six to give you the idea. And how are we doing that? So keep in mind, we've got our Connect Player Controller here. Let's turn it on. We have in our blueprint. Let's just go up and edit that. We um, we have a couple of things, different things going on. First, we get a reference to that Connect Player Controller, and we've just gone get Player Controller, cast it to KPC, and set it as a variable here. And we've done that in all our examples. We find it's a great way to keep things neat and tidy. So then we have to wonder, who exactly in the scene should we track? Um, we've got this great little heuristic function, get centered body. It just says the person that's in the middle, right in front of the connect, smack bang in the middle, whoever's closest to the center, that is the body, which is a little enum here, that's the body that we want to track. So in all our other nodes, we'll use this body in order to determine who we want to um, who we want to track. Then we have some boring stuff about hiding the default figure, which was um, removed when Liam stepped into the scene. And then we go into this little function here. And this is what I really want to show you, get joint absolute position. So it takes the Connect Player Controller, a type of joint that you want, so that's a head, neck, spine base, the like, and the centered body you want to track, which we found out with get centered body. And that's it. We just set the, the position, and then we have a little text. So I'll take you now through a couple of the other um, capabilities that um, K4U allows us, and this is one of them, volume and audio. The Connect has an array microphone, which allows you to work out the direction from which the loudest noise is emanating. So if Liam jumps around, you can see that the little red arrow here is actually following him. And if I speak louder, you can see that the green bar is actually matching my voice or Liam stomping. Okay, so how does that actually work? Let's find out. And up here, as with before, at the start of play, we get a reference to our KPC. We store it as a variable for later, just makes things nice and neat. We drag out from the KPC, go get audio beam rotation in degrees, or microphone volume intensity. We'll do both of these. First step, the rotation in degrees, that just gives you a um, value in degrees, obviously. And we flip that around, so it's pointing at the player when they're making the noise. We make a rotation, we use that F rotator to set a relative rotation, and we're done. As for the intensity, we're just using a value from 0 to 1 in order to do some cool stuff with our material later on. You can use that for whatever you want. Hide the player, um, spawning objects, it's really up to you. We just provide it as a great input. So, let's take a look at rotations. So Connect um, has an interesting, interesting choice of um, convention for the rotations, and that's a little bit of a problem because it is not as intuitive um, as we would like. So we can see here that uh, if Liam puts his elbows just at rest by his sides, they actually point to different directions, which is a little bit confusing. Um, we provide a smoothing function, so this is great for um, if you want to do slightly more complex things, but really from 90%, maybe 95 of what you want to do, we've actually used a derived rotation from the positions. So what do we mean by that? Let's go and explore both of them. First up, the joint rotation. And this is the easier one because we don't have to do much. So 
as before, a KPC reference, then we get the dominant player, and then we feed that centered body in the KPC, and we, dis uh, we define a joint that we want, so you can just pull down, grab any joint you want, we get a joint orientation from that. So that's an F rotator that we can feed into a relative rotation function. So it's really that easy. Um, and the slightly more useful version, slightly more intuitive, is instead of grabbing that um, rotation, or orientation rather, we get the relative position, which is a vector from one joint to another. So we get the vector from the left elbow to the left wrist, and then we create a rotation using this rotation from x vector. Very handy little function. We then feed that into our relative rotation. It's as simple as that. Okay, let's move on to delta position. So this is essentially um, uh, the vector between the previous position of a given joint and the position in this frame. So the difference between this frame and the last. And how, do, how exactly do we access that? Well, exactly the same as before. We'll need a reference to a connect player controller, grab a dominant player, and then we have a get joint delta position function, which just, you know, define a wrist. Maybe we can change it to the head, but we'll just leave it at wrist, why not? Um, like there. And that gives us the um, vector, uh, sorry, that gives us a vector, which is essentially representing the change from the previous frame to the last frame. So that's all well and good, but you've noticed maybe it's relatively jerky. What we can do is use a macro in order to smooth what's going on here. And I'll just show you that briefly. If we jump into the blueprint, we can see we've got this average vector samples. I won't go into the, um, into the in details, but essentially we just define what we need, which is we wait for 10 samples to come through and then we average them out. So just waiting for those last 10 frames and giving us an average results in a far smoother, um, a smart, uh, sorry, a far smoother result, which shows us in roughly what direction with what speed the um, given joint is moving in. So that's really useful for different gameplay things like, you know, maybe throwing, bowling, jumping, the like. Anything you need to measure an intensity of movement for, maybe have a look at the dot position. And lastly, we've got the camera frames here. You'll notice that infrared, raw RGB, and normalized depth here are looking similar, but not entirely similar, to what you'll see in the SDK basics. Raw and infrared, um, or uh, sorry, RGB and infrared are pretty much um, exactly piecemeal as you'd expect them. Note the RGB texture is HD. Thankfully, um, with this plugin, it is not a great uh, performance strain. The normalized depth is a little bit different. We've actually constructed that so it is matching the convention of Unreal's um, depth mapping. So that's quite useful. You can just use that as an input. Maybe you can cut someone out. Maybe you can look for things in the back of the frame. Really, it's a material, so anything you'd like to do, we provide it as an input, and it's up to you. Okay, and that's it. Thank you very much. So that was a brief whistle-stop tour of some, but not all, of the functions that Connect for Unreal allows you within Unreal Engine 4. Thank you very much for listening, and keep an eye out for our later videos.